Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of What's That? What's That? <laughs> oh, yeah. As always, my name is Nick the Viking. And this is my partner in crime, Ruben the Toy Man. Hey, guys, welcome back. This is a show where we dive into some pop culture stuff and give you a little bit of history about it. Yeah, we enjoy putting together some nice pieces for you to see. Hopefully today, you won't be disappointed. And you won't be disappointed because we brought back another favorite topic for tonight. But before we tell you what it is, we do want to let you know if you're new to this channel to hit that subscribe button and the notification bells because we do post stuff each week. In addition to this show, we have other great shows and content that we put out all the time. We're going to take you through a journey with nice collectibles that you can enjoy as we present them. And hopefully we'll tickle a funny bone or two along the way. Tonight's theme... I believe it's some kind of food. Mmm, I'm kind of hungry. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Actually, the Nickelodeon Winter Mystery Box has got some food-related items, which is about some kind of... Well, I already see it looks like a stove with some slime. It looks like it's going to be very, very cool. That's right. What do we go from here, guys? What do we do? We are going to do the very second full live unboxing of a Nickelodeon mystery box where we actually do have a special camera angle set up for this very specific episode. That's right. I see it. We see you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll knock some of this plastic off first. To the portal. <laughs> so here you can see there is some eggs frying in the pan. It looks like a stove, and the Nick sign from far away actually does make it look like a light on in the oven, which I think is pretty cool. It's actually a nice design. Love the graphics. It's like a vintage 1950s oven. This is not nice. And it's an electric oven, too. And this box, also like the last, was made and put out by Culturefly. And we're giving you the exclusive first look into that when I pop it open right here. And that camera sees it all. Oh, and we don't know what's in there. No, we do not. It's a surprise. And just like last time, we're going to go back and forth and choose out different items. Okay, sounds like a plan. This is going to be fun. Let's just dive right in. All right. Oh, I already feel exactly what I was looking for. The very first thing, which is why it's going to take away a lot of mystery from the rest. And I believe this is for you, sir. Oh, boy. Uh -huh. So we did order the large this time. It is a shirt. Good burger. Yes! <laughs> it's good burger. I'm so glad this came in. I love the color too. It's nice design. Graphics are pretty on there. Nice green print. Colorful. Long sleeve. Oh look, the sleeve's got designs as well. It says good burger on the side. I wonder if I can go work at the Good Burger. Before we talk about Good Burger, let's get the official review on how that shirt feels because it looks awesome. I feel pretty. Actually, it feels really good. It's nice. Good. It looks really comfortable, and I love the big burger right here. Well, we love burgers. Welcome to Good Burger. How may I help you? <laughs> Welcome to Good Burger. Home of the Good Burger. May I take your order? Give me some burgers. That shirt was tastefully done, but... Very nice. Good flavor on it. <laughs> the color is very similar to the Arnold sweater. Actually a little bit darker. I like that. Oh, this is a blue that's very... There we go. Yeah, okay, yeah. I dig. It's similar but different, so it's very cool. You can tell that it's been put up by the same company. I like it. And it's crazy. We were actually just talking about the burger crazes that have been going on right now because Mr. Beast just officially launched his chain of Ooh. burger restaurants. For those of you that don't know, Mr. Beast is one of the most famous YouTubers out there who does a lot of amazing things where he gives back to a lot of people, donates a lot of money, a lot of food to charity, does videos centered around just giving stuff away, and the money he does get puts back into all of his videos, which is why he's so successful. Wow. Thank you. That's a very noble cause that you have there. That sounds like a very interesting endeavor, and it gives back to the community. 
It and is. provides competition for McDonald's. I was wondering with how other restaurants that come from TV or TV themed food would actually work out. Like if someone did make a good burger restaurant, mm -hmm. how that would compare to something like Mr. Beast Burgers. As long as there's good quality and good people running it, it should be successful. Honestly, I've always wanted to try different food products from the TV. In our previous episode, we did open a FYE mystery box, which was all kinds of different candy. And on that same episode, we had a Reptar bar and some Fleeb juice. That's what I got Fleeb. <laughs> I would love to try a good burger. So if anyone knows out there any kind of restaurants that like to reproduce any kind of Nickelodeon food, even like a Krabby Patty. Uh, that'd be so nostalgic. Which TV Krabby burger do you think would be the best? Hmm. Well, you know, Krabby Patties are interesting. Good Burger itself was a skit that developed on all that. Kel Mitchell was the main character in it. He was the person that ran the counter and would always get the orders wrong. It would just make the show really fun. But then they eventually turned it into a full movie. Right, right. All around the burger, huh? Exactly. Which is very funny. It was. It was good. <laughs> One of the burgers. The, do, do you remember Bronco Burgers from Flintstones? Krabby Patties, the uh, Good Burger. They had Bob's Burgers. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> Bob, how's your burgers? We'd love to hear what burgers you would like to try. Or if there's any obvious ones that we're missing. Burgers are always a wonderful topic. I think it's time to jump back into this box and see what else they've packed for us. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Something here. Ooh. Oh, okay, what that's cool. Kidding? I was not expecting that at all. Rockles Modern Life Oven Mitt. Wow, it's functional. It's so Whoa. pretty, too. Yeah, what? <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right, so this is pretty cool. We did cover some Rockles Modern Life in the last episode. It seems to be that there are some favorites that they do like to bring around because Rocco was one of the first Nicktoons put out. Well, I remember the episodes of Rocco's Modern World. He had his friend Heffer. It was always pretty interesting. I always learned a lesson. Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah, Melville. <laughs> so they said that they're going to be putting in food products and different things. I was not expecting a functional food accessory. And who doesn't love Rocco. Look at the vibrant colors. Oh, it really is nice. And they did a good job with the colors because it mimics his shirt. Yes. The blue and even the purple <laughs> line around. I like it. I'm going to go turn the oven on just so I can pull out the rack. <laughs> hey, there's the oven. <laughs> Ding. Dump. Rocco was one of those cartoons that was meant for a more adult kind of crowd. Nickelodeon existed because they wanted to put out a little bit more of an alternative type cartoon series. And over time, they started gearing more towards like the younger and younger crowd. Rocco's Modern Life and the Rugrats turned out to be such huge hits. It really started the whole ball rolling for Nickelodeon. From there, Nickelodeon Studios grew and they had other cartoons, I think Doug was also the third that they released at the time. And they came out with stuff like Angry Beavers and Are You Afraid of the Dark, which was one of their first live actual shows. And they had other like competition things like uh, Legend of the Hidden Temples and even Global Guts. That's Guts. right, Devil Dare. Y yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> all, all great programming. Wonderful time for Nickelodeon. I think this box keeps outdoing itself. So far you have pieces that are functional and presentable. Either way, it's a win-win. Are we ready for the next piece? Here we go. Something else, cloth. <gasps> Looks like more Rocco. Uh, it's a pot holder. Oh, wow. Okay, so that must be a set with the oven mitt. Oh, yeah. And there's definitely a matching set. Wow. Okay, I like how they did this. This has the actual pattern of Rocco's shirt on it. This is another pattern, I think, from the actual show okay. in the intro. Another nice little piece. I mean, what can you say? A pot holder and a oven mitt set. Pretty. Props to Culturefly for not only putting out some cool items, but also knowing how to make a nice set. 
But the quality is good. It looks like it will also be very functional. It's really cool to have a themed kitchen set. These will make great collectibles or even additions to people's kitchens. Whether you want to use it or just want to display it, this would be perfect for your kitchen. And it captures a moment in your time that you could remember and cherish as you were growing up. All right, now now I can't wait to see what else is in there. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm excited too. <laughs> well, that was cool. All right, let's... Oh, I feel another kind of cloth thing. What the heck is this? Yo! Yo, Good Burger socks? Are you kidding me? What the heck? How do you even wear these with shoes? There's burgers on them. <laughs> <laughs> Those are really nice. What the hell? We needed these when you had to go <laughs> to your challenge. Uh oh. <laughs> we found like the punishment. They, they look like they're walking socks where you can walk on like a grips at the bottom. What? You see this that? is wild. I'm going to put one on. My feet are pretty kind of clean. Those are so cool. Good burger socks. Fabulous. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and they fit. And they're actually really warm and comfortable too. Except there's a little weighted on the front. Actually, I kind of dig that though. The burger does flop around when you walk though. <laughs> yeah, and obviously you can't put shoes on. With those. No. <laughs> Boom. Okay, so we did talk a little bit about Good Burger before. It was one of the few spinoffs that did come out of all that. You had shows like The Amanda Show. That's right. Yes. Keenan and Kel, Drake and Josh, and even the Good Burger movie that all came out as spinoffs because those characters stood out above the rest. And isn't that interesting how you can see... It's kind of organic growth of creation happened right before your very eyes, you know? It's funny you say that because we were actually watching some SNL skits this past weekend. We saw some that were hosted by Keenan. Oh, okay, yes. And it shows him graduating from all that, which was more of the kid-friendly SNL, to the actual show. He did a great job on that, and I thought that he fit in really well doing it. It's really good to see them grow before your very eyes and continue to work. It shows you that the talent it goes beyond the show. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to all those doing their thing. Welcome to Good Burger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we're ready for the next item. In with the one, two Mayweather. <laughs> You're lucky. He didn't give you the three, four McGregor. Chucky! What is... Oh, it's a Chucky vinyl figure. Wow. This is like a Culture Fly Funko Pop. Oh. It's a Funko. This is pretty cool. We love Funkos. Wow. Okay. We mentioned Reptar Bars before, didn't we? Yes, we did. And that's exactly what Chucky is eating. Yes! Chucky's hanging out with us! This box itself is even very cool. It has a lot of the Nickelodeon Rugrats graphics on it, but it's specifically designed like Chucky shorts. Yeah, okay, I see that now. And then you have this right here. It is normally in the beginning they would have the title of the episode on. Oh, gotcha. The graphics are relevant with this show. Yeah. The box is designed to capture the essence of the Chuckster. And this show was designed to unbox the Chuckster. <gasps> We're unboxing! That's right. We're going to slide this box out of the way. And put this box in view so we can start unboxing it. Is the next box exclusive on there? If everything that comes in the Nickelodeon boxes is exclusive to these boxes, and you can't find them anywhere else unless somebody is trying to resell them. So, yeah. nice. You have some Reptar bar graphics on the inside. We love candy. Okay. Wow. He feels very sturdy, and it looks like there's even a base in here from Stand On, which normal Funkos do not come with. Oh, and even has on the bottom the Nick box built by Culturefly. There we go. Okay. That was a little tight, but there we go. That's sweet. Wow. Now that's a way to display a vinyl. 
very colorful captures the graphics perfectly they really do a good job his hair is nice and pointy and he's three-dimensional they did a good job they even got the green tongue for the oh, reptile yeah. bar that's right he bit into it so you do see a little bit of the green <laughs> losing out <laughs> all the details down to his socks and his shoes are all good we mentioned before the pattern on his pants replicated here on the box i think they knocked it out of the park you really get to appreciate pieces like this because you can touch and hold. And then it makes you just want to watch an episode. And <laughs> hop open a Reptar bar and see if your mouth turns green too. Oh yeah. By the way, if you do want to know whether your mouth does turn green or not, if you eat a real Reptar bar, check out the episode we did about superhero teams. Superhero teams, we did it. That box was a My Hero Academia box which is a very famous and popular anime about some really cool superhero teams he's got really good memory <laughs> <laughs> i just speak it well <laughs> it's very creative the way they did it because it is a chucky figure but because he has the reptile bar it makes it very relevant to this box's topic chucky is one of our favorite rug rat characters they're all, all wonderful you really felt like you knew these guys I grew up with them. Chucky was the clumsy Freddy cat of the group. He would always try to get out of going in the adventures because he would always think it wasn't such a good idea. Over time, he started to get a little bit more courage, especially when he got a younger sister. He had to step up and be the big brother. Mm -hmm. So Chucky has come a long way. And he has saved the day from time to time. I, I dig a good Chucky episode. Oh, yeah. Very good. <laughs> How nice was that, huh? That's going to be hard to top. I am still smiling from <laughs> ear to ear just seeing that piece. I really like when pieces like that. Let's see what else comes out of these okay. things. Even though these are so cool. What the heck is this? Oh. So it's another piece from Rocco's Modern Life. It is. It's a it's more art. It's a screen print of Chunky Chicken. Okay, okay, okay. This was the chicken restaurant that they would go to in Rockland's Modern Life. And <laughs> this is actually a really cool print. I do like it. It is really, it's on canvas, it looks like. It is, yeah, it's on the mini canvas. Oh, very nice. Okay, let's slide the box over again. <laughs> and let's take this plastic off and get a better view of this guy. We let's love art. <laughs> to the portal <laughs> slowly to the portal it's got very cool color reminds me a lot of the greatness of the Rocco's modern life cartoon the fabulous piece which also makes me think of other chicken restaurants chicken and ribs this is our chicken and ribs right here chicken and ribs is our chonkies this is chokies <laughs> oh chokies oh chicken oh okay. oh okay chokies chicken so that actually has a double entendre right there. One that we're not going to mention because this is a family-friendly show. And then one that I believe probably anticipates people choking on this food and possibly dying from it. Both don't sound good to me. <laughs> no. This is why Rocco was more of an adult cartoon. Perfect example. <laughs> I would have been calling it Chonkies all night if you didn't point that out. I think Chunky sounds better. Chunkies it is. <laughs> look at that, even that chicken looks kind of concerned. Yeah, well look where that pipe is going in. And I'd be making a worse face than that. <laughs> I like it. It captures the whole Rocco influence as far as adult theme and yeah, it's all there. Makes me actually want to go out to Chick-fil-A and get some spicy chicken sandwiches now. Oh yeah, let's get some chicken. We've got some burgers, we've got some chicken, we've had some oven mitts, and even some more burgers on your feet. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Me too. We should have ate dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what was I pulling out of there. As long as it wasn't a monster. And I don't know what I'm about to pull out now either, but let's see. Here we go. A box within a box. Ooh, what is this? He got a box. What the heck is this? I've got a little bit of a close-up over here. It says scarf it on it. Whole grain knit scarf. It's a scarf, but it says it's whole grain. Can you eat it? Oh, it has nutritional facts on the side. Wait, you can eat it? So it says serving size, one scarf, a total length, 60 inches, coziness, cool factor, chill protection, enviability, retro style, 100%. Slime, 1%. Slime? 
There's slime in there? I hope not. It doesn't sound like you can eat it. Let's open this bad boy up. There's a lot of cool unboxings today. Oh, yeah. So far, it's so good. Wow. Oh, that's nice. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. This is cool. Yeah, buddy, we got the Nickelodeon scarf. Look at that. All it's right. nice and warm. It is. It's very thick. Where's the slime? <laughs> I'm wondering that myself. If I put it on, am I going to get slimed? I'm going to create some distance. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Nope, I didn't get slimed. I like this. I like this a lot. High quality. This box never disappoints. And for those of you that know me, I am a scarf guy. I do wear your scarf that I stole from you years ago. I was wondering what that was. <laughs> Very comparable to the beanie that was in the last box. This is another Nickelodeon item, but another wearable winter. Functional? Yeah, accessory. And now you got a set. Very nice. I like it. Me too. Nice colors. It's, yeah. And it's knitted too. All right, I think I'll just rock this up. The scarf reminds me of the movie Snow Day. Josh Peck was in it. And I think Chevy Chase was also in it as the snowplow driver. It was a snow day for the kids, and the enemy of a snow day is a snowplow because the earlier they're out, the more likely you are to go into school. It was just a good family comedy. As Chevy Chase was always a very revered comedian with National Lampoon villainizing the snowplow guy. It really resonated. Everybody hated the snowplow guy for more than one reason. Not only did he clear the streets, but he put that snow in your driveway and you had to reshovel it. That's right. We're on to you. Yeah, we know who you are. <laughs> it's the scuffiest. Scarf face. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah. Ooh. The heck is that? We got reptar chocolate mold. No way. Dude, we're going to make reptar bars. Wow, okay. So yeah, this is a silicone mold designed to melt chocolate into it so you can make your own Reptar bars. But realistically, you can put water in there and make giant Reptar ice cubes. Jello. There we go. A jello mold. Wonderful design. Reptar. And we have chocolate. I think we're going to make chocolate mold. We did try some Reptar bars previously in the past. It was always one of the candies that I always wanted to try from a cartoon, in addition to the Ed and Nettie Jawbreakers. I know I'm breaking a little bit of code, you're jumping over a Cartoon Network talking about them right now, but the Ed and Nettie Jawbreakers are one of the most iconic candies because they were huge, <laughs> and I always dreamed about having a giant Jawbreaker that I can eat. I always admired in those episodes that they would be so big in their mouth. <laughs> Actually, it was like another head. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, they were just 25 cents. That's right. <laughs> For candy this big. Yeah. Fantabulous. All right, all right, all right. That box did feel kind of light, so I know we are winding down. Okay, well, that was really cool. I can't wait to do something with those molds. Yeah. That's going to be fun. It is. <laughs> Ooh, another boxed item. <laughs> Yo, they're going heavy with this good burger tonight. We got a burger! PVC pod case. Protective PV skin for Apple AirPods. Oh, wow. Oh, this is really cool, actually. Oh, wow, it's functional. This is literally a carrying case for your wireless headphones. Okay. Oh, how nice is that? One of that has AirPods in it. AirPods not included. <laughs> <laughs> this box would be expensive if it did. That's a nice piece. And even has a little carabiner that you can use to attach to your hip so that you don't have to put it in your pocket and you can hold on to them. Yeah. How many joggers wouldn't mind a good burger AirPod holder? Just give you a closer look at it. Ooh. This, ooh, this is fun. It's actually like a silicone holder for them. And then... You would put them in, right there. Mm. They would sit in there and they would come out a little bit. So when you put the top on it, the headphones would actually be holding it in place. Oh, okay. 
I think it's lacking in a little bit of sturdiness because it shouldn't be two pieces. It should be a hinge. Yeah, that's interesting. That's the way I would have seen it playing out as a hinge. So I've been giving great reviews to all their items so far. As functionality purposes go, I would definitely not use this for my AirPods. Because you're going to lose them. Exactly. Yeah, I don't see how this would stay secure. Oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. A case for the insert of your AirPods. Oh. So you would take the insert that it came with and you would transport it into here gotcha. so that there's space right here for the top portion to go in and then there's space in here for the entire bottom portion that docks the AirPods as well. Then that's a joke. <laughs> it's a it's a nice collectible. It's got the actual good burger on there. It makes it nice nostalgic memorabilia. It's raised letters. Actually, you can feel the poppy seeds on the bun too. Mm. It's cool. It I is love cool. a burger. <laughs> yum yum. There's still another item. Dead boy. <laughs> We got <laughs> cupcake liners. This is interesting tonight. Arnold. These are Nickelodeon cupcake liners because they have Rugrats, Cat Dog, The Wild Thornberries, Rocco's Modern Life, Ren and Stimpy, Ah Real Monsters. This is dope. So now that I think about it, we have pot holders, oven mitts, and cupcake liners. I Guess we're making cupcakes. I would actually go nuts right now if there was a cake mix box in there. That would be insane! So they want us to make Reptar bars and Nickelodeon cupcakes. Sounds like it's a good time. Definitely would make a great addition to a Nickelodeon style party. Yes, absolutely. So unfortunately, these probably won't show up too well on camera for you, which is why as always, we do our close-ups, which will do, boom, right there for you now. So this one has all your favorite characters. We mentioned the shows, but there's Tommy, Helga, Rocco, Uglina, Gerald, Norbert, Donnie, Ren and Stimpy, Heifer, Ickis. Sounds like a smorgasbord of characters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got all the favorites in here tonight. I like them all. And I like cupcakes. Cupcakes, yay! Yeah! <laughs> the bottle. I think this might be the final item tonight. So far, every one of these pieces that we pulled out of the box was a pleasant surprise. I gotta say, I'm thoroughly impressed with this box tonight. It actually did outdo last season's box. I think every piece that came out of this box was fabulous. Without further ado, here we go. Ren and Stimpy, salt and pepper shakers. Holy moly. Oh, look at that inside of this box. They went all out and actually did make it an oven with two racks inside. Very nice. A Ren and Stimpy salt and pepper shaker. What a wonderful piece to have. <laughs> Those aren't going back in. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have two glass shakers here, one with Stimpy smashing a plate over his head. And the other one is Ren smashing a frying pan over his head. <laughs> Why are they hitting themselves? <laughs> so it's clearly marked that Ren is salt. And there's a P in the top of this one for pepper. This is a very nice piece. Oh my goodness. It's got nice graphics on it. It's a wonderful collectible. A nice hard glass. Metal twist off top. Favorite classic Run and Stimpy characters. Perfect to go with the oven mitts. And now you have a Nickelodeon kitchen set. I like how they gave a lot of useful items to this box. It all works! Hang up the Chooky Chicken sign in your kitchen. You fill up your salt and pepper shakers. You hang these off of your oven and you have your Chucky sitting up on top of the oven letting you know that it's time to make some Reptar bars. Oh yeah! And we're gonna make them! I'd like to see you kick the hell out of something with that. <laughs> if you want to see me kick a burger field goal, let me know. We will put these socks on and kick field goals. <laughs> How's he going to put on his socks with his shoes? And you cannot wear shoes with these unless you're wearing sandals. Oh, yeah. That's dope. You like my sock? <laughs> 
Wow, another impressive box put up by Culturefly. Let us know if you enjoyed this one better or not as much as the other box we did. Well, personally, this was my favorite of the two that we did. Yeah. So, two thumbs up for this box. I have to agree. As much as I love the outer space Halloween type theme of the previous box, this one just outdid the last one. Knocked it, knocked it straight out of the park. Right out of the park. Home run! Thank you so much for spending tonight with us, boxing and unboxing all of these cool items. We had a really good time. I hope you guys did too. And who knows? Maybe you'll see us wearing these things soon. All right, so stick around next week for the next episode that we do. And as always, peace. Bye, guys. <laughs>